सो वील बी लुकिंग आफ्टर द टॉपिक टूडे इज फाइबर चैनल ओवर द इथरनेट सो एज यू पीपल नो दैट वी आर बिल्डिंग द फाइबर चैनल बेस्ड अपॉन द इथरनेट इथरनेट इज ऑलरेडी द पर्टिक्युलर लैन ऑन विच द फाइबर चैनल यू आर गोइंग टू बिल्ड नाउ वाई वी हैड to come across this one what are the disadvantages uh, the ethernet is having or what are the advantages the ethernet is having so that we have used this fiber channel so whenever i want to transfer the data so there is a different type of the data to be handled whenever it it is to be transferred for the data centers so when i use this tcp ip communication that is a uh, best used for the client and the server communication Uh, so what are the other benefits are like data backup infrastructure management communication and so on when i'm using this fiber channel uh, so what are the benefits of that one is for whenever you want to move a data in terms of the block level between the storage and the servers that is more beneficial now if in case i combine these both is there any benefit before i combine what uh each and every network has got a particular advantage now when i say fiber channel uh moving of the huge data is been done when i say tcp ip communication between the client and the server uh, you are not having much of the lossy uh, channel and all the data is been received in a very proper manner now when i uh, try to combine these both together then there is a problem because they both are the different networks i have to make sure the components i am going to get and also the cost of the network has to be reduced because investment in the infrastructure is a big big problem for the uh, each and every organization because they have to invest lost lot of budget so the people or the organizations are not going to adapt to that one next one you can see here in this particular diagram you have the servers you have these ip switches which are been connected to the lan through the lan you are transferring the data from one server to the another server using these ip switches and here you can see this this is a fiber channel uh, where you have the servers and the switches using the fiber channel you are trying to transfer the data to the storage array whenever i have to transfer the data from one network to the another network please remember there is a particular uh, protocols being used when i say fiber channel then there is a particular protocol separate protocol when i say ip network then there is a different protocol for that one now they these frames whenever it moves from one network to the another network they have to be converted because I, as i previously mentioned uh, the language what i speak and the language the person is understanding has to be the same if it is not been there then i need to use this translators when i use this translators obviously there is a huge investment the same way here also you can check here these are the ip switches when i say ip switches the header format is been different when i say fiber channel switches then the protocol stack is totally different so these conversions have to take place now when i am using these both the channels then the different set of the infrastructure have to be installed so obviously when this is the case then more number of the network interface cards have to be installed more number of the host bus adapters have to be installed uh, obviously what it leads uh, most uh, what is that it is going to be more uh, cost and uh, you have to install unnecessarily the switches the cables and the adapters uh, which is leading to more uh, what you say the uh, what is that investment in the infrastructure and when i you know, include more number of the switches and the cables then obviously what happens the cost for the power uh, more number of the devices that means more number of the heat is being generated then i need to apply the cooling techniques for that so that uh, the switch uh, the components or the infrastructure is going to uh, long last for many more years all right so this one is been overcome by the Uh, what is that fiber channel over the ethernet switches now you can check that you are using these switches of the fiber channel you have the lan connectivity and you are been transferring the data if you refer the previous diagram you have been having four servers 
the four uh, here we have four switches and here two more extra switches so total six switches and two storage array but using the fiber channel over the ethernet the two extra switches are been reduced right so that means when i say two switches have been reduced and even the network is also been reduced for that one and the cables are also been reduced so the data that is been transferring from one server to the another server is done through the ip that is done through the lans itself and the uh, exchange of the data is been done through the switches and then it is been stored in the storage array so by this one what happens is the traffic is going to reduce yeah the uh, what is that the requirements that is in terms of the cables adapters and the switches is going to come down when this is all is been cut cut down in the infrastructure then obviously it is having a cooling effect also that means the infrastructure that you are installing in terms of a reduction of the power in the cooling and all is also been reduced all right so this is having the overall effect of having the fiber channel over the internet switches moving on what are the components that we require in this fiber channel over the ethernet network the first one is converged network adapter so this converged network adapter is the combination of the uh, standard network interface card and also the fiber channel host bus adapter these both together i combine them and i bring up with one component that is called as converged network adapter the second one is as usual we need the cables and we need the switches so using three uh, components i am going to have a network of the fiber channel over the ethernet so what this uh, converged network adapter is going to do how it is going to work now this diagram you can check here this is the adapter we have been having which is having the uh, what you say the application specific integrated circuits right all this one is been combined with the 10 gigabit ethernet we have been having the another one is the fiber channel so whatever the application it is been receiving in terms of the fiber channel or it can be in terms of the ethernet with the 10 gigabits that is all been combined and this is here the input and the output operation takes place that means whenever you want to transfer the data to any of the other storage devices here it takes place now you can check this bus is being used through which you have been communicating right now you can check here it is giving the power up to 10 gigabit that means 10 gigabits per second the data is been transferred right and even in terms of the frames also whenever you have been uh, encapsulating or decapsulating that much number of the uh, data is being transferred that means the fiber channel what it is been transferring the huge data is being in uh, incalculated over the ethernet so as ethernet is a lossy channel that means the data is being uh, what you say uh, to uh, it is having a dedicated channel from the client to the server so we are transferring the more information moving on to the next one is the cables as you can see that there are two types of the cables one is the copper based twin ax cable and another one is the standard fiber optical cable so we are using these two cables to transfer the information uh, so twin ax cable here is the image of that one you can check it for the transfer of the information this is used up to uh, the distance of 10 meters and uh, having a, cape, a copper uh, inbuilt within this one and it is going to require less power and it is also less expensive uh, please remember uh, the organizations are more interested in the uh, what you say the equipment that is going to consume less power and also at that same time less expensive the more expensive then they are not going to adapt to such a technologies at all right and they are also using this small form factor pluggable connector so that it is used to connect uh, for more number of the storage devices now optical fiber cable when i take it is being used used to over the longer distance but that is the drawback in the twin ax cable because it is only used for up to 10 meters i can say what is a drawback because it is having the copper 
when i say copper then obviously there is a heat being generated when heat is being generated then obviously there is a loss of the data right but uh, the another factor why optical cable uh, sorry the other drawback of the optical cable is it is more expensive but when we take the twin ax cable it is less expensive so they are trying to combine them both together so that the transfer of the data is been at a faster rate okay then moving on to the next one we are using if a coe switch so what this switch is consisting of uh, you can check in this diagram it is having two types of the ports one is fc port that is fiber channel port at one side and the another side it is using ethernet port whenever the data comes using the ethernet so we have the ethernet bridge and if we are transferring the data using the fiber channel port from the various ports we are using fiber channel forwarder so these both functionalities are been combined in one particular switch uh, if you refer the previous diagrams and all we are having one particular switch either it is fiber channel switch having only the fc ports right so this one particular port i had to install if you have seen the ip switches then only ip switches will be having the ethernet bridge and ethernet port now i have been combined them both together so which is been replaced by only one particular device okay so now what what is this going to help or what are the advantages i can say and what is the functionality of these uh, switch so what it is going to do is it is uh, having both the switches so what it is going to do is whenever it is transferring the information it is going to encapsulate in terms of the fiber channel and it is also going to decapsulate in terms of the fiber channel frames itself so whenever it uh, sends the data uh, over this uh, ethernet uh, the frame whatever is been encapsulated it is being transferred if in case using the ethernet then uh, there is no need to convert uh, those uh, frames into the fiber channel frames so it is easy uh, it is directly forwarded but if in case if it comes to the fiber channel port and it has to be transferred to uh, using the ethernet port then this forwarder is going to convert that frame towards the ethernet and then it is be transferred right now whenever i am using these conversions and all then i have to make sure what is the frame structure i have that one so in this frame structure if you check we are using this destination mac address we need to have this source address and we are using this ieee 802.1 tag and we have this ethernet type and version so it is going to decide the version that we have been using and there are some fields which are already reserved okay we have the start of the frame end of the frame and in which we are going to encapsulate these fiber channel frames and we are including even the crc okay if you people remember the crc we are used to check the integrity of the frame or the data that is being sent so that it is not been manipulated if in case it is been manipulated then crc is going to help to recover that one right and there are so many reserved fields this which is not been changed okay so total uh, if you check in the pre next diagram you can check that how this is been done so this is fiber channel payload right how much data is being sent you have been having crc when the crc added the fc channel header is been added along with this crc now you can check this is an extra load being attached along with that one i am going to attach this fiber channel over ethernet header when i add the header then the end of this header has to be added now you can check the number of the bytes and all so the 24 bytes a 16 bytes and when i transfer it over the ethernet header then we are been having this fcs right so we are been transferring the information uh, please remember nearly up to 42 bytes of the information is been transferred right so sorry a 48 bits of the information is been transferred each and every uh, what you say the part of the frame structure is been divided either in terms of 32 bits or 8 bits or 16 bits right so uh, next if you check we have been having this uh, framing so as you have been studied 
the different types of the protocol uh, stack now you can check this is the osi layer having the different uh, net uh, what is that layers using the osi model and you can check this is the fe coe protocol stack and uh, we have been having this fc protocol stack fc protocol stack if you people remember it is been divided into fc0 to fc4 layers right fc oe protocol stack how it is been divided again you can check even that is also divided in terms of four layers and how these are been mapping all right so the data link layer of the osi model and the physical uh, layer of the osi model both together are been combined for the mac layer and the physical layer of the ethernet okay so these together are been formed now you can check fc2 fc3 and fc4 these all they have been combined together with the fc layer that is protocol fiber channel protocol layer stack now you can check here the protocol mapping the services the framing data encoding and decoding and fc0 is being combined with the physical layer so please remember each and every layer whatever the functionality is being provided it is mapping to the other protocols so that the information remains intact if these layers are not working with this one then the transfer of the information never takes place so this interfacing is important between each and every protocols right whenever you move from one network to the another network moving on what are the technologies available so that the uh, what do you say this fiber channel over ethernet is a trending okay how you make it uh, more feasible for the organizations to use that one right uh, as you know the ethernet channel is a uh, lossy nature that means some uh, frames will be dropped okay this is the main drawback of the ethernet so only we have come with the tcp ips and uh, even this converged enhanced ethernet or you can say that optical cables because ethernet is having this lossy nature for that purpose to overcome that one so we have added some of the functionalities to ethernet so that the loss of the data is going to overcome the first one we are using this priority based flow control the second one is enhanced transmission selection the third one is congestion notification and the last one is data center bridging ex exchange protocol right the first one is a uh, priority based uh, flow control so in this one what happens is it is going to uh, provide the link with the uh, what is that data link layer and what it is going to do is it is going to create eight virtual links right now you can check in this figure over one link itself okay over the one link itself it is going to create eight different virtual links so that it is going to send the data over these links now you can check that the there is something called as a pause right so when it is paused means this particular link is not working so it has been stopped to transfer the data so over the first all these four cables are be, four pack frames have been moved then the first one is been receiving at the second it is been transferring only four pack uh, frames are been received over the third whenever it is going to send it is asking to stop that means please don't send these frames right so this is how they are been increasing the transfer of the data from the source to the target okay so they are using this a pause mechanism so that it is going to stop or it is going to use the network based on the priority right so this is been uh, helping in the transfer of the data the second one is the enhanced transmission selection in this enhanced transmission selection what we are going to do is we are going to allocate the bandwidth based on the traffic class whether it is uh, the lan or the san or the inter process communication we are going to check that one and we are going to uh, transfer the data the second uh, the third one is congestion notification now you can check in this diagram we have a node a and this is the node b 
and uh, they are trying to send the information using the intermediate switches. When node A is been sending the information, he sends the information in the bulk. All right, it is being transferred to the switch and it is being transferred to the switch number three. And please remember, it is nowhere concerned that it is only node A. There will be n number of the devices connected to this one. Now, when there is a congestion, I hope a few people remember what is that congestion means. Lot of the uh, uh, what is that? The traffic is available or the lot of the data is available and it is not being received. So that means what happened? There is a loss of the data. So what it does is this uh, switch number three is going to say to the switch number two. Okay, and in turn, switch number two is going to say it to the switch number one to make sure that to limit or to send the data in a very, uh, what you say, the at a lower rate so that there is no more, uh, what you say, the loss of the data. And meantime, it is being sent to the node A so that it is going to limit the packets so that no more packets are being lost. What happens if the node keeps on sending even after there is a notification? Obviously, uh, the whole data has to be resent. That means simply you're wasting the bandwidth that is being allotted, uh, allotted, right? So what is happening? This is a smartly being saying that I am being already loaded. So please, can you slow down the rate at which you have been sending to the switch number two? And the switch number two in turn is going to send, please slow down for the switch number one. And the switch number one is in turn telling it to the node A. All right. Simple when I am allocating more number of the task, then obviously what happens? It never uh, uh, is being done successfully. So if in case I give it one task after the one another, then all the tasks can be done full fledged. Else what happens? You may remember some task or you may forget the some task. So to avoid that one, this congestion notification is being used. Okay. The last one is data center bridging exchange protocol in short called as DCBX, right? So what it is uh, going to do is, it is going to combine the features of all these Ethernet and the converged one only into one single network so that uh, the it is going to allow you to distribute the data using these same adapters and all, right? Uh, and uh, at, at the same time, it is going to ensure the consistency across the network. Uh, please remember when there are two different types of the networks, you will be having a ring a network uh, and the another one will be using the fiber channel uh, networks. So there is a different, uh, what you say, the exchange of the information, the protocols will be different. At that time, you have to convert it to one form itself so that it is being understood by the network devices. So for that purpose, these all uh, topologies or these all uh, techniques are going to help and at that same time, the data is being transferred at the faster rate. Okay. With this one, your uh, FO, FCOE is going to complete. In the next class, we are going to study the network attached, right? network attached storage, uh, how it is going to help for the transfer of the data. Uh, and uh, what are the devices involved, what are the protocols being involved, that all we are going to study. Okay, thank you for the day.